Hello and welcome back to part three of creating a flex connector with ArcSight. So uh, just a quick recap on the previous two sections. The first one we actually walked through uh, just looking at the log file, looking at the tokens and thinking about how we would do some of the processing. And the next stage was actually just installing a just a quick test uh, flex connector. In this case, it was a uh, regex file folder and uh, just doing the basic configuration for that. We haven't actually done any parsing or anything from there. What we do need to do now is is have a little bit of an understanding of what is located in where and what we need to adjust. The great thing about a flex connector is it is just a, f a bunch of files, uh, uh, some configuration files. I, I do encourage everybody to read the flex connector development guide. It's not the easiest reading document in the world, but it is very, very extensive and goes through everything you could possibly know uh, or, or need to know with regards to that configuration. What I'm going to draw out here specifically is the structure. Uh, and when, when we installed it, we installed it onto my local VM here. And there's a bunch of files that are really very relevant to what we need to do the next stage. Uh, the log is critical for troubleshooting, and the properties is what tells it what it's going to do and how it's going to operate. Uh, default properties is the generic settings that you should have uh, fixed for the particular connector as well. You'll find all the descriptions around the folder structure, where everything's located, and more importantly, uh, we need to dig into those and, and understand a little bit further of what's going on. So let's take a closer look at some of those files of what we've already done as a, as initial configuration. So if I look at my particular uh, uh, terminal session here, I just have a look here. We can see this is where we installed that flex connector. Uh, we can see that this is the top level folder structure, and we actually want to go into the user agent folder as well. So if I take a look in here, it's just a bunch of files. The important one here, is, as noted in the documentation, is that agent properties. So let's just take a closer look at that agent properties file for a second. I'm not going to go through all of the settings here, but I want to draw out a couple of things with regards to that is all we're doing. We're just doing that basic configuration setup. So we can see how we can control things. We can see how we're going to extract various things. And we can see that the configuration file that we called this was flex file. Now, we will actually have to adjust that later to tell it exactly how to behave. And it's actually the file name of that configuration file that tells it the different ways to behave, whether it's a folder, whether it's a file, uh, whether it's a, a particular other setup as well. And we'll need to change that. I just gave it a, a particular name there. And we can see the other uh, settings there with regards to what do we want to do. In this case, it's a file, remember? It's a folder in a file. Do we want to uh, rename it once we processed it? What do we want to do at the end of that? We actually want to rename the file and, and call it dot .processed and so on. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of information in there. And we'll come back to that later, but I wanted to flag that up with regards to that. So what we do need to do now is actually start going through the pro processing stages of how we need to do that. So if I just go back into uh, the binary uh, bin folder uh, and just go back up uh, and go into bin, we can actually run top level folder top level uh, execution of the actual executor arc site and we actually want to go through and we want to create this as a regex as well so there is a nice little tool that allows us to do this called uh, regex uh, unsurprisingly and it will actually load a little graphic interface for me to do this. Now, there is newer and, and faster ways to configure the uh, Flex Connector, and there's simpler ways as well. Uh, but I wanted to show the older way, uh, the more effective way, and the more flexible way of doing this for the simple reason that if you can understand how to do this, everything else is going to be a lot easier. So what we do now have is our little regex tool here. So let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And what we're doing here is we're just doing some configuration of that file itself. So first step, step uh, we need to create a new flex agent. Now it actually goes into a particular folder structure, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. It actually puts it into that uh, the, the connector folder, current user agent, and then it actually puts it into this flex agent folder for us to test. Now um, uh, flex file is what I'm going to call it keep some sort of naming structure there uh, we go ahead and create it now you'll notice here it says SM pattern there isn't anything it's detected we haven't given it a file so let's load our log file and what we did do is we put that into our particular source there and there's our particular file so this is the sample file that we looked at at the very beginning and it's going to process that so what do we have well 
when we look at the regex there, it's just going to match everything. So that dot star means match everything. And remember, we're talking about tokens here. So we need to break everything out into particular tokens, which we can map into specific fields. Now, the clever thing here is you can see there's actually given me some, some basic uh, configuration file here. And that's all this tool is doing is creating that file. And we can see the settings down here. So we can see there is only one token, which is that one, which is indicated by the the brackets around it, the parentheses around it. It's matching dot star, which means everything until the end of the line. Uh, and it's putting that into one particular field. So it's mapping one token into the initial token. It starts at zero, maps it into the message, and it's a, of a type string. So that's all it's going to do. And it's going to put into, uh, if I scroll down a little bit further in that configuration file, it's going to put that into uh, that event name. Uh, it's going to put it in the message field. So that's it. So that's what happens typically when you don't do any processing. It's just going to put that into the message field and not do any other additional mapping to that. So what we do need to do is we need to start messing with our regex here and understanding what's going on. I could hit generate and it's going to try and understand some basic settings here uh, around what we want to do. Uh, it doesn't always work and if you're lucky, great. If you're not, you're going to have to write it yourself. So what we do need to do now is start breaking things down. And remember, we have to put it into these brackets to break out these tokens and we'll see these tokens down here and we can actually give them names and labels and so on. So let's just start. Now that yellow bit is the key thing with regards to parsing the data out here because it's going to give us an indication of whether we're actually getting a map. So uh, let's start with that first set, which is the, uh, the, the, the date and time stamp, if you remember from the very beginning. So we do need to parse that out. So let's just remove that to start with. Notice again the yellow actually is disappeared now so there is no mapping involved. So what we do need to do is let, let's break this down. So what we do need to do now is start using regex effectively to do that processing. Again, I do thoroughly recommend reading the documentation around this, but in general we're going to use a number of uh, ways that we can describe that using the S for string and D for digit uh, essentially to process this out. We do need to do what we what we call escape that out. So we need to describe that so we can read it consistently. So that's typically indicated by this slash. So we'll do that and uh, we want the first three uh, digits here or actually text here which indicates the month. So that's going to be capital S which is characters and plus means any uh, number of those. So they could be, uh, it's typically just going to be three but I'm going to cheat and just do plus. Uh, so in that case, it comes out to there. Now, it is a look ahead mechanism. So it's actually going to look ahead for a particular character. And I actually want to map out the underscore. So I particularly put that down. And the next bit is a number. So I want to map that slash. It's digit, so D, uh, a couple of numbers in there. So it matches any numbers, not including white space. Again, I do thoroughly recommend reading the documentation to describe exactly what all these regex ter terms are. Once you can master these basics, the rest is actually very simple. Now, white space is a space. So actually, I can put the space in. So again, it maps that. You can see how it's doing the little extra space there. The next bit is another uh, bunch of numbers. So I'm going to go slash D plus, and then a colon, and then slash D plus, and then another colon, and then a slash D plus. Plus, and then hey presto, we've actually parsed everything out that matches that sequence. So three letters, string, an underscore, two numbers, a space, two numbers, a colon, two numbers, a colon, and two numbers. So that's my first part. What I typically would want to do at this point is actually just put those into the parentheses ready for my token. It's the parentheses that makes it a token. So let's put a uh, tokens around this to indicate that it is that. So there we go, that's our first token. The next one, if you remember, there was two spaces. So there's one, two. Uh, I don't want the square bracket, so I could put the square bracket there. But notice it doesn't work. Uh, that's because square bracket is a special character in regex. So I need to escape that out. So there we go. I just put the slash in front. That's called escaping out. Uh, put that in there. And again, the next is uh, a bunch of numbers. Now, actually, I don't really want these numbers. So I'm actually just going to parse them out to make it more complete. But I'm not going to put this in uh, uh, the, the this parentheses to make it a token. So I'll just quickly do this. Uh, slash D plus colon slash D plus colon slash D 
plus. I, I, there are other ways of processing that. Uh, I'm just doing this as an illustration of typically how you do a, a time or a timestamp. And again, there's a uh, the, the square bracket at the end. I need to escape that out, so I put the escape symbol, and then I put the square bracket at the end. Then there's a space. And now I have the action. So this is typically going to be a uh, a string. Uh, we we know that from the log file. So again, I go to slash s plus to get the whole. Uh, and then there's a space. Now I do want to store that, so I'm going to put that in a parentheses uh, for my token. So again, it goes red because so, it doesn't match. And there's my next token. Uh, I've got the space there already. And then I want the um, in this case it's the username. So slash s plus uh, slash s plus is a regex operator. Uh, in this case, actually matches any character that's a, not a white space. So that's a little cheat one because there's a dot in there. Uh, I'm actually just parsing that out anyway. So uh, let, let's put the uh, token around that. Make that another token. Then I have another space. Then I have a, uh, another bracket. Again, if I just put the bracket in there, it doesn't recognize it because it's a special character. So again, I need to escape that out to indicate that it's actual the character bracket. So again, I put the slash and then the bracket. And then I've got card number and then the actual number. Now, I don't really want the card number bit. So I could just parse that out. So I can literally just type the characters card space. And because I'm doing this on a Macintosh, I need to cheat and put the, the uh, um, hash there. And then I have the number. Now, uh, in this example, I do want to parse that out. So I'm actually going to parse it out as I'm typing it. So I'm going to put the uh, bracket to indicate the start of a token uh, because it's a number, slash D for digit, a number of, and then close the bracket. Now, again, there is that bracket at the end that I need to parse out. So again, I need to escape that and put the bracket. Uh, then I have at, well, I don't really care about at, and then I have uh, a particular location. So in this case, uh, I do want to parse all that out. So what I could do is just do slash s plus, see that it goes right the way out to the end. Remember, slash capital S is any uh, text character that's not a white space. So again, let's, let's put that into the brackets to indicate a token because I do want that. And then I have another special character, so I want to exclude that. And then I have another bit of text that I want to get in there, slash s plus, because uh, it could be in or it could be out. So that could be two characters or it could be three characters. Plus means any number of uh, a particular characters there. So I want to put the end of that. And then I want to escape out the final square bracket. So what we can see there is we fully passed all the message there. Everything's highlighted in yellow. We've got a bunch of sequences there in uh, parentheses. Uh, we've escaped out the various square brackets and so on. And we've got everything mapped. So OK, that's a good step. And what we can do is we can actually hit these numbers to go through our sample log file. I'll just go forward. Oh, that didn't quite work. Interesting. So oh, but that one did. So you can see that there is going to be something that's going to fail and something that's going to work. Now, why is that? Well, if we remember here when we did this card, uh, we did it as a D, a digit, because uh, the first one was just uh, a, a number of th three numbers. But this is one that actually has a letter in it as well. So, oh, well, we need to adjust that. But notice when I go to number four, it parses out all these uh, tokens because that's the things we want to pull out. So that was one that did work because it was in all numbers there. But let me go back to number three. So I need to adjust that from rather being D to being S. So S is characters. It could also be numbers that's non-weight space. It's quite a clever way of doing things within within regex around that. So that's a little, little uh, tip there around that. So I can just step through and I can see all my data is now passed. And I can see it's put into the particular mappings there. So if I just expand that out a little bit to see a little bit more, I can see I've parsed out some text there. I've parsed out the uh, admitted. I've parsed out the username. I've parsed out the card number. I've parsed out the particular location. And I've parsed out the action as well. What I can do is I can actually give these some sensible names for a second. So uh, let's give the uh, this information to uh, call this action. Let's call this user name. Let's call this card number. Let's give this location. 
let's call this one direction. Uh, and then let's just go back to this message and we'll call that one time. So uh, it's always a good idea to save all of this as you're going through. So let's just save that file for a second. What I can do uh, is just step through everything, jump through and check everything as being parsed, processed uh, correctly, which I can see it is, which is good. I can jump straight back to the beginning. So we're good there. Uh, and that is just basically doing the regex, creating the tokens, mapping those to a particular label here, which will then do the settings in the actual file below. But you can see just doing some simple regex, I can parse out the relevant data, timestamp, not parse out some of the information here, which is the secondary time, which I don't need. Parse out things like the admitted, the username, uh, just get the number with relevance to the card number, and then the, the particular location and the direction. It's as simple as that. Now, I haven't finished yet because I'll need to adjust things within my configuration file down here. So if I look a little bit further, we can see now in my little configuration file as I'm creating things, it's actually put in the regex. It's given me a total total count of six, and it can see that we've given it some logical names, uh, and we can see some further information there. But we're doing no mapping. We're doing no mapping with regards to the fields or anything like that. In fact, what is still there was originally set. So the name of the event is still set to be this label message, which, which we haven't given it anything there. So that's not going to work, uh, but we'll come on to that in the next video. Uh, so that's a good step through, just explaining some very simple regex and using the backwards and forwards just to log compare to check what we're doing. So on to the next one. Thank you very much.